Let's take a look at how you use the character sheet for the One Ring role-playing game. Everything out for a character is laid out here and what they need to know in order to play the game as a player character. As you can see, the name goes up here in the center, and on the top of the character sheet, you have what's listed your heroic culture, for, so whichever you choose, Hobbits of the Shire, Dwarves of Durden Forts, etc. Listing your age, your standing living would go here, and depending on the start, you can write down how much, how many treasure points that is. Zero for poor, etc, etc. Distinctive features are listed here, so this would be if your character is stern, and etc, whatnot. There's really not much space to add in uh, the descriptions of it, because generally you'll get two to start off, and then you'll get one for your calling. Remember for st distinctive features is after every uh, adventuring phase, when you go into your fellowship phase, you can actually switch out your distinctive features. Cultural blessings are written here, and that's individual for each heroic culture. And then your company patron will be listed here. Your calling, depending if you're a champion, treasure hunter, etc., will go here. Listing down the shadow path, uh, you'll list down the what shadow path it is based on your calling, and then the flaws that are gained as you progress in your bouts of madness if you proceed to that. Now, as we continue on, we're going to pull out Bilbo Baggins from the starter set. As you can see, it's a shortened uh, listing up top for all the different features as compared to the regular character sheet, but that's only because it's part of the starter set. You do have the nice little portrait here over on the side, and the same thing can be done here. You can draw it or put some type of picture in there for your, your character. So, as you can see, you have for your attributes, strength, heart, and wits, and associated with that is everything, uh, the skills that are associated with that attribute. For strength, it's awe, athletics, awareness, hunting, song, and craft, and then the associated combat proficiencies. For heart, you have in heart and travel, insight, healing, courtesy, and battle, and then your valor is associated with your heart, as well as the rewards that you get for any type of weapons or armor or helm or shield. Wits has persuade, stealth, scan, explore, riddle, and lore, and your virtues and cultural virtues are all based on your wits as well as your wisdom. As you can see, um, when you are calculating your TN score, which is the target number, it's based off of your strength rating, your heart rating, and your wits rating, which is listed here on the top right of the main TN box. As well, as you'll notice that your endurance goes underneath your strength, your hope is associated to your heart and it goes here, and then your parry for combat is underneath your wit score. And generally what you do, depending on the culture, you add whatever it says your endurance or your strength rating, and then add whatever value the number is for that culture, as you saw in the earlier videos going over the heroic cultures. Whatever war gear your character is uh, using uh, for weapons, so whether it's a sword, whether it's just picking up some rocks, using a bow, using an axe, it would go down here. You list the name, here's where you list the damage rating, the injury rating, the target number for protection tests for adversaries would be listed here, how much load each item is against your character, and then any notes um, and special features for the weapon. For instance, Sting glows when orcs are nearby, and that's one of its special features, along with it having a higher injury rating as compared to a regular short sword. Uh, over next to the war gear, under the same heading, you would have listed your armor, helm, and shield, which gives you your, your protection rating, which adds whatever helm any 1D per the armor, and then the load associated with it. Shields don't add uh, so much to protection, it adds to your parry rating, which is found up here. Again, marking the, noting the load. In this box, this is slightly different than what you would see in the normal character sheet, so we'll just quickly go over here instead. Adventure and skill points are tallied here, and you get uh, usually around three adventure points and three skill points per session of playtime, and that's adjudicated by your lore master. Your fellowship score, which the total fellowship score of the company that you're in, would be listed here, and you would adjust that accordingly uh, as it increases or decreases as the company decides. 
current endurance is listed here in the big box, as well as the load of your total of your armor and your war gear, and then also fatigue gain during journeys. We'll cover more of that later in a future video. Your current hope, based off your maximum hope, is listed here, as well as how many shadow and shadow scars you gain during adventures. And again, we'll cover that in a later video. Any conditions that uh, you attain during an adventuring phase, whether it be wary because you have uh, too much load versus your current endurance, if you're miserable, if you have no hope left, and then wounded if you're wounded in combat, and then the type of injury and the lists here, you know, if it's uh, how many days generally um, your injury lasts. And again, we'll cover that in a future video. Your traveling gear here is generally things that give you some type of bonus to a skill roll or has some type of effect. For instance, for Bilbo, uh, his magic ring, spend one hope to turn invisible, and then a fondly wrought pipe, insight. And you generally list it here. You can, if you want, add um, certain elements for character flavor, but just usually your useful items and any marvelous or wondrous items you pick up. All right. Let's take a look then at the skills itself. So how do you read it? For instance, your lore master has asked you to do a riddle roll. Okay, so you take a look at riddle and you figure, okay, what does these, this all mean? Well, you need to roll a riddle skill roll over your target number, which in this case is 13. And you have to be equal or more than that to roll. First, you check to see if it's a favorite item and if the there is a check in this box to the left of the skill. That means it's favored. If it's not, it's unfavored, and you only won't roll one feet die. If it's favored, that means you roll two feet die and pick the best result. For your ranks in your skills, or pips, or marks in the, in the diamonds, that's how many success dice you roll. So to roll for riddle, when asked, you take your two feet die, because it's favored, and you add three success dice to the roll. Roll the dice, taking your best result for your feet dice, and then adding the three results from your success dice. If that number totaled is equal to or greater than 13, you succeed in that skill. It's as simple as that. What you'll notice though for your valor and wisdom, unlike your skills and your combat proficiencies, is that it's, you have a numerical value. And this new numerical value corresponds to however many success dice is rolled um, when doing a shadow test um, uh, for either valor and wisdom, breed, dread, uh, sorcery. You can't do any type of shadow test for misdeeds, and we'll cover that on a player-specific um, shadow video. That's essentially it for the character sheet and everything that you need to play the game and mark for your character is on this. If you like this video and the other videos that I have created, please like it, share it, comment, and subscribe to the channel to help make it grow and spread the news about this great game. I'm Ryan of the North. Thank you for watching.